Hi, welcome to Mornings at the Museum. I'm Miss Kim. Today I'd like to talk to you about a man called Dave the Potter. His real name was David Drake. He was an enslaved African American that was born in 1801 in Edgefield, South Carolina. He was very well known or became very well known for creating very large pots, like the one that you see behind me. These pots are unique because Dave often signed them and sometimes he even wrote poetry on them. This was very special because many enslaved Africans were not able to read or write and he was one of the few that could. So I'd like to read a story to you about David Drake called Dave the Potter, Artist, Poet, Slave. This book is by Laban Carrick Hill and is illustrated by Brian Collier. To us, it is just dirt, the ground we walk on. Scoop up a handful, the gritty grains slip between your fingers. On wet days, heavy with rainwater, it's cool and squishy, mud pie heaven. But to Dave, it was clay, the plain and basic stuff upon which he learned to form a life as a slave nearly 200 years ago. To us, it's just a pot, round and tall, good for keeping marbles or fresh cut flowers. But to Dave, it was a pot large enough to store a season's grain harvest, to put up salted meat, or to hold memories. Each one began out of clouds of dust, clotted clumps of clay, ground in the pug mill and carried wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow to Dave's spinning potter's wheel. With a flat wooden paddle large enough to row across the Atlantic, Dave mixed clay with water drawn from Big Horse Creek until wet and stiff and heavy. He threw the clay, sometimes 60 pounds at once, and nobody knew how or where it would land except for Dave. Dave kicked his potter's wheel until it spun as fast as a carnival's wheel of fortune. Like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Dave's hands, buried in the mounded mud, pulled out the shape of a jar. His chapped thumbs pinched into the center, squeezed the inside against his fingers outside. As the wheel spun round and round, the walls of the jar rose up like a robin's puffed breast, but only so far before its immense weight threatened collapse. The jar grew so large, Dave could no longer wrap his strong arms around it. If he climbed into the jar and curled into a ball, he would have been embraced. Only then did he stop his potter's wheel and roll long ropes of clay between his dry caked palms. Dave mounted these coils of clay one by one on the half finished jar. He ran his wet fingers along the sides to smooth it all together, kicking the wheel with the heel of his foot. The shoulder and rim shrugged upward as the jar took shape. Dave knew he was there even before he worked the raw mound on his wheel. While the clay dried, Dave pounded wood ash and sand to mix a glass-like brown glaze to withstand time.
But before the jar completely hardened, Dave picked up a stick and wrote to let us know that he was here. I wonder where is all my relation, friendship to all and every nation. I hope you enjoyed Dave the Potter um, and I hope you have a really wonderful day.